On the 11th of December 2010, members of the Irish Whale and Dolphin Group and scientists from GMIT left Dunmore East on board the Rebecca Sea with skipper Martin Colfer. Conor Ryan, expedition leader, explains the reasons for this trip. The reason we're going to is to collect biopsies, which are um, skin and blubber samples from the fin whales. Um, and we collect photo IDs as well, so we make sure that we don't sample the same animal twice. Um, we do that using a crossbow, and uh, the dart is fired at the animal. It takes a little plug of skin and blubber, and uh, the dart floats. We retrieve it with a net. It all sounds very easy, but it's actually quite difficult. And difficult it proved to be. As Connor and Alessandro positioned themselves in preparation for action, the other ten members started looking out for the telltale signs of fin whales. The first sign was a sequence of circular areas of smoother water on the surface of the sea. These so-called footprints are caused by the whale's powerful tail as it moves just below the surface. The most dramatic visual indication of a fin whale is its six-metre high blow. The team began to spot these blows close inshore, but frustratingly the boat couldn't reach the animals before they completed their surfacing sequence. As can be seen from the footage, some of these whales were very close inshore. At one time they were feeding in 15 metres of water just off Ballyvoyle Head. As fin whales grow up to 22 metres, making them the second largest animal in the world, this is a remarkable occurrence. Although the technique involves getting closer to the animals than would normally be sanctioned, as Connor explains, he believes that the impact is minimal and short-lived. The reactions there from the last, the, the recent biopsies, uh, um, were very, very low uh, in that the animals didn't really change their behaviour uh, uh, very much. They just kind of they sank away. Uh, they didn't, they didn't freak out and start flapping their tails or anything. Uh, very, very low reaction. Uh, a little bit startled in that they'll, they'll sink instead of finishing off their their surfacing sequence. But we have to be careful as well. You know, the technique it's uh, it, it is potentially it's, it c could be harmful to the animals if we approach them too close. Uh, there's potential for for the boat perhaps striking them or if you shoot them uh, at too close a distance uh, you could do them um, un un unduly harm them I suppose um, so we take all those things into consideration and you know that the technique is so powerful the genetics uh, and the stabilized soaps it can tell us so much about the animals um, uh, and you know benefit the, the conservation that uh, we've no no problem doing it and stand over it 100% it's uh, it, uh, it's a very very powerful uh, technique and um, the welfare of the animal isn't uh, isn't really compromised in my my belief anyway um, one example would be the say whales that they that they um, blew holes in the side of um, for want of a better term uh, up in the in the in the mid-atlantic and uh, they, it was a marker capture technique where they they literally blew explosives at them back in the 60s and 70s blew a big hole out of them and that was the, then they were marked and then they would go back to the same place every year and very high percentage um, recapture rate so it suggests that the animals were were surviving even from big trauma like that and the, the the biopsy tip the dart tip that we use is the size of your baby fingernail so it's it's very very uh, small piece of tissue and uh, whale skin actually um is a very high turnover rate because it's a natural anti-folant so they, they're constantly sloughing off skin so the uh, it, it repl skin replaces itself very quickly so the animal's uh, integument is only punctured for a small amount of time so it's not open to infection for a very long time we use the skin and the, the blubber for, um, I use two, two techniques, uh, genetics and stabilised soaps. Um, the genetics can tell us about the identity of the Irish fin whales, you know, where do they come from, where are they going to, uh, is there a distinct Irish population, or, um, and also you can determine what gender the animals are, which is important for uh, conservation, you know, are they all females, are they all males, <coughs> or is it a mixture between the two. Um, which gender is important for for uh, understanding what's happening in our local population to, to figure out you know what kind of cohort of animals we have um, and gender is not something you can determine uh, visually from the whales because they're not they're not sexually dimorphic the males and females don't look different so um, gender can be determined using using the genetics as well um, but for the stable isotopes um, what I do, what I have done in the past is collect uh, fish samples and I look at the stable isotope uh, signatures. Isotopes are just, just um, uh, it's a chemical signature basically in, in the skin of the whales and then look at that same chemical signature in fish and you can actually match up uh, um, what the whales are eating, assign prey to them. Um, based on the technique, it, it, the, the technique is based on uh, you are what you eat. So as the whales eat fish, that's converted into their tissues, such as skin. So uh, and, and the signal should be faithful. Um, so we've multiple uses for the one uh, 
for the one tissue sample and there's even a girl done from, from Dublin today who's doing her PhD also um, sequencing uh, RNA so uh, each tissue sample will be will be used for several different uh, several it has several uses.